I would like to. Oh, Paul. Paul Kantner died. Paul uh, was the uh, Jefferson airplane. The Jefferson airplane. Now, when I think about the Jefferson airplane, I remember 1967 so well. Um, I, my brother Jimmy and I, had a had a recording deal as the Peppermint Trolley Company, and the guitarist who joined us, Patrick McClure, and our drummer was named Casey Cunningham. But Patrick had uh, had came from the Bay Area, so he was. He was he had been exposed to all that those San Francisco groups that were were starting to starting to get some airplay on on college radio and so forth, and he had a he had a copy of Surrealistic Pillow and he played it for me, and I was just blown away how different it was, and what uh, how kind of trippy but beautiful the music was. Yeah, it's a great album. Oh yeah. My favorite of yeah, it, it's it's got so many great tracks on it, and that summer in in June, the four of us went up to Monterey, and on on the Saturday at the Monterey Pop Festival, the Jefferson Airplane performed, and they sounded just as good as as the record, and Paul Kantner was was a rhythm guitarist and uh, a background singer, a harmony singer. But he had a lot to do with with the sound, with that uh, that group vocal sound, and he was also he and Marty Ballin were the co-founders of the band. It it preceded Grace Slick coming into the band. Grace Slick before Surrealistic Pillow, and their first I I think they only had one album before that, but it was a different singer. I think it was Ingrid somebody. I can't remember her last name. Sorry, but Grace Slick had a had a a band called the Great Society, and she brought her material, White Rabbit, and Don't You Want Somebody to Love, into the band. Well, that sounded great. Uh, <laughs> that's a hell of a thing to bring with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a- White Rabbit, they got the, that introduction, that Bolero introduction. Boom, 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 boom. They got that from... Uh, Sketches of Spain, Gil Evans, Gil Evans's uh, arrangement for Miles Davis. Davis. Yeah. So they, you know they were very eclectic. They they had a, a a folk background. They all came from folk originally, like so many of those. You, you know, like the Buffalo Springfield, or the Birds. They, they came out of folk music. Were they um, were they West Coast originally, or were they? Uh you know, Greenwich Village or something. No, I don't think they were Greenwich Village. I, they were pretty much West Coast. And um, were they part of the Merry Pranks? Or did they play I, the Electric mm, Kool Aid parties? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. I, I you know, they played the Fillmore and, and did all that. All those bands, you know, intermingled. And, and Grateful they, Dead, I think. Were, yeah, yeah, the Quicksilver Messenger Service, Country Joe and the Fish, who were actually across the bay in in, in Berkeley. <laughs> but uh, when when we were in Monterey, and so many of the the people from the hippies came down from San Francisco, and I I was used to the the L.A. the Hollywood studio scene, and this this scene that was up in San Francisco was so different. It, would, it just seemed to be so so magical and free and, and homegrown, at least at that time. It was very exciting, and the Monterey Pop Festival was was a beautiful thing. Uh, what month was the Monterey Pop Festival? Yeah, it was in June. It was, I think it was, uh, it was something like June sixth, something like that. So it was right at the very beginning of the Summer of Love. Yeah, the Summer of Love, but the week after that, the weekend after the Monterey Pop Festival was the was the, um, the police riot, at Century City. Which we will get into on a, on another show, but you know where the where the cops beat everybody up, thousands, a hundred thousand people. Uh, yeah, we, we'll get into that some other time. But um, it it Big didn't squelch our. <laughs> you got to remember this was Sergeant Pepper's had been released, and Sergeant Pepper was out. Uh, Surrealistic Pillow was getting played. Uh, the Doors' first album was becoming well known. There was lots of lots of lots of stuff happening. It was a very exciting time. Yeah. 
I'm sorry to see Paul, that Paul is no longer with us. I saw him about two years ago in uh, the latest uh, edition of Jefferson Airplane. And the musicianship was really good. Um, did he stay with the, the He did. He was, he was the only original member who stayed, who was in every incarnation of the band. So he was through yeah, the Starship. Yeah, and I finally got to, you know, the Jefferson, the Jefferson, what was it called? Starship? Yeah, Jefferson, Jefferson Starship. Starship. It be, they be, began to sound really commercial and just like everybody else. Yeah, we uh, built this city. Yeah, it just didn't have that magic. <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, it, everybody did in the 80s, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Paul Kantner co-wrote a lot of stuff. He, he, he co-wrote uh, with Crosby, Stills, and with Stills and... Stills and Crosby, Wooden Ships, you know, Wooden Ships off the first off that first album, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of a dark, dystopian vision, but uh, beautiful. And he co-wrote Today, which is like one of my favorite uh, Jefferson Airplane songs. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. Yeah, it is. And even the uh, saxophone cover of that became a famous rap yeah. song. So, yeah. <laughs> um. yeah, the 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 airplane was. Um, very melodic, very melodic and beautiful, and um, colorful and colorful and rocking at the same time. And they had they had a great bass player Jack Cassidy, and a great guitarist Jorma 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 uh, Kalkonen. I, I'm sorry, I'm not getting that name right. Kalkonen or Kalkonen. He was his his father was Finnish. He was uh, he was a he was a first generation Finn. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Have you ever heard them? They did a performance at Bryant Street, like on one of the clubs there, and they played today. But it was with a lot more piano, and it's a com it's almost a completely different song. Yeah. So they they were that whole set is they they play White Rabbit differently. I'll have to give you give it to you so you can hear it's. Well, they probably got bored with doing it doing things the same way. Yeah. And, and plus, they 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 always had kind of an arrogant attitude. They did. Didn't you say that they didn't really care much for a surrealistic? Yeah, club? that's what I read. That they thought I was too commercial or something, and I thought, that was, "Hey, kids, that was great. Surrealistic pillar was great." Well, that's where the gravy comes from today. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure, they're not saying it now. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'd like to, I'd like to mention Wilton Felder. Although Wilton, Wilton passed away last fall. I didn't learn about it until just a few weeks ago. He was a, 